Welcome back. You're watching Channel 199, the Oscar Pistorius trial channel. Live pictures there of the High Court building here in uh, the capital city. Nice day in the capital. Gridlock, as always, in Madiba Street outside the High Court building. Not uh, too much in the way of activity just yet. Of course, we do know that State Prosecutor Katie Nell has already arrived at court. He's inside the court building. Uh, he arrived at around uh, 10 to 7 this morning, no doubt, uh, to put the final touches to his... Uh, his preparations at some point he's going to be cross-examining Oscar Pistorius we're not entirely sure when that, that is likely to be joining us now in our rooftop position here in Pretoria Tom Peck a correspondent with the independent newspaper in the UK Tom good to see you morning how are you doing very well thank you you've been here for a long time yeah how I, are things how are things been going um I've been here since two days before it started um the weather certainly got a bit better <laughs> um how's it been going it's been something of a roller coaster hasn't it although although a stop start one and we are hopefully today finally at the the brow of the hill if you like when with the real action will start absolutely i was going to describe it as, as one of the peaks in that roller coaster what was yesterday the biggest day for you of this trial i think it possibly was in the sense that that's a day that we were all building up to um everybody knows that his that when oscar finally is in the stand he will begin by talking through his life story about his athletic career, about um, about the times when his family has been victims of crime. Um, I thought that was slightly unfortunate, by the way, from a British or an international perspective, because I think sadly it confirms quite a few stereotypes that people paint think a bleak about picture, this doesn't it? Yes. Country, which aren't necessarily the case. Um, I thought the, his apology was very emotional. Um, that he has nightmares. I mean, I don't suppose anybody will be surprised by that, and it doesn't necessarily affect one's view of his innocence or guilt mm. but i think yesterday will be um will pale in comparison in what we might hear today uh, and, uh, and in cross-examination mm. too of course mm. whenever that might be uh, we're very fortunate to have you here tom because you mm. have interviewed oscar pistorius tell us a bit about that i have twice yes i was the olympics correspondent for my newspaper back in in 2012 in this in that wonderful chapter in our city's history um they were happier times and and strangely like like any journalist who met him then for the first time um when this incident first first broke on valentine's day last year mm. i was one of many journalists who said oh yeah he's the nicest guy i've ever met so polite so courteous so friendly so charming and then it only took really 24 hours for this sort of darker side to emerge and of course there's a huge leap from that to whether or not he's done what he's charged with doing and it, it's it does feel slightly extraordinary to sit behind him in court and to watch this broken man on the stand to think he's the same guy who came rampaging around that bend in London and really, really dazzled the whole country and the whole world, yeah. And, and captured the imaginations of so many people around the world. I mean, I suppose that explains why this particular trial has such extraordinary traction around the world. But, uh, you know, people who may not have uh, seen it firsthand as you did at the Paralympics and uh, indeed at the Olympics, the Olympics in, in 2012, yeah. uh, the extent to which he had become a global sporting icon. Well, I don't think you can really overstate um, the story of his life. I mean, I mean, I, imagine, imagine being a father who drives um, your 11-month-old baby to hospital to have both of his legs amputated below the knee, and then you blink and it's a quarter of a century later, and he's sprinting in the Olympic Games. I mean, it completely defies belief. Mm. And then you fast forward that story a little bit more, and you have this most extraordinary, most unbelievable, grim, grief-stricken chapter in the whole thing. And I think people around the world are as captivated by that for the same reason that South Africans are, because it's just the most unbelievable story. And I imagine as a result of that, Tom, that there's an extraordinary amount of interest in your stories coming out of Pretoria. Um, there are, yeah. Um, I'm forever having to go on our uh, news channels at home and things like that. Um, but certainly I think there's been a little bit of a dip, as um, I suspect you guys have realised, when long going through photographs and going through this and going through that, and then today, finally, um, we will find out I mean, th there are plenty of people who just feel his story is full of inconsistencies and they're waiting to see those inconsistencies challenged as they are about to be. So they certainly are. It's been fascinating talking to you. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Tom. We'd like to get you back. We know you're heading back to London on uh, Friday, but uh, we'll chat to you before you uh, get on that plane. <laughs> Thanks Thank very you. much indeed for your time. Tom Peck, correspondent for the Independent Newspaper in the United Kingdom. We continue to build up to the start of day 18 of the Oscar Pistorius murder trial, including keeping an eye on who is arriving at court. We'll bring you those arrivals as and when they happen. For now, though, it's back to Devi in Johannesburg.